<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. That's where it is where I am right now. I hope that, you know, we learned something today and I'm going to go ahead and just show you like a quick example of what we're going to do. So pretty much I'm going to be making uh, infinite looping particle system. I see these particles. Particles are always kind of like that. Think of that, that seasoning for your render and sometimes it's hard to loop it and or just put it in. Sometimes you can get away with it not being perfect, but I'm going to show you how I've kind of learned how to do it. And I'm going to go ahead and shout out this one YouTube creator uh, that I saw. He made a quick video about it, but there definitely was some like details that I wanted to dive in. Let's dive right on in. So I pretty much found a model on Sketchfab. This could be any model of your choice. You can animate it. However, I'm not going to go through the lighting setup today, but you can kind of see this is what I have. I'm using EV today. Uh, you could use cycles as well, but I just use EV for these kind of things just to save time and it doesn't need to have all that like cool cycles data at the, at the moment. So kicking it off with the bread and butter here. Let's go ahead and I made a little I'm working off one of my previous files. So I made a collection and I call it particle system. I'm just going to hide everything that I worked with previously, but you can kind of see it's just three three thing um, okay so first thing I'm gonna press shift a click open a plane and with that plane we're gonna go ahead and run over here to think about all the blue icons here and it's gonna be this one that kind of just like has these little dots and lines Ask plus and you'll have your first particle system if you click shift you'll notice we have a very bare bones system but you can see things falling now what we're going to do here is we have an animation that is 250 frames. We pretty much want that to just like loop. And right now you'll see the lifetime, I believe is 50 and you see like, yeah, I'm just going to demonstrate here. Let's play it all the way through. And it ends, right? And you're gonna want something in your animation to just keep going. Imagine the music's pumping. So let's get that kicked off. So first things first, <clears throat> what I like to do, or what I found to do is we essentially need our particles to be chunked out like chapters. And what I did was pretty much, and you could do this with any num any frame size. I think the math would just differ. So what I'll do here is make this we're going to make each we're going to make each particle chapter 120 frames. So we're going to start at negative 125 then we're going to end this one at zero and make the lifetime 125. So you'll see now when the animation is kind of starting, it's ending at the start. But that first like frame, we already have particles. Let's create another particle system. I'm just going to go ahead and call this. I like to keep things organized sometimes. Sometimes I'm just winging it. If you're in a rush, I can imagine you're probably just winging it right now. Make this one start at zero and end at 125, and the lifetime is still going to be 125. Then we do another one, and we're going to make it number three. And since this one ended at 125, you can guess this is going to start at 125, and then 125. 250 each one of these is just adding another 125 and ending exactly at the end and you probably can do this with like any size like I said the math can change but now if I click play at the start we have all these particles like they're going like they're just they're going and you'll see at the end it just keeps going Okay, so you pretty much have your particle system. If like you know what to do with the wind and stuff and how to do all that stuff, you're done. Like this tutorial is over for you. But for everyone else, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you a little bit of that secret sauce to get those like laser like effects. I'm not gonna really mess with anything in terms of forces. We'll just leave that to keep the video short and sweet. But I'm gonna call this now particle system two. I'm not gonna bake anything yet but let's position our particles. So now I'm going to right click and open up <coughs> or cut cut in the middle here, just so I can kind of see where my camera is. And if you're wondering how I did that, 
hold down tilde, view camera. And now you'll see, okay, we have our sword and our subject right in the middle. What I'll do now is just make it a little bit bigger because we want to make sure it covers a lot more. And don't worry if you press space in the middle and a whole bunch of particles show up. That's just Blender doing its thing and trying to calculate some stuff, you know? To get that cool, like, wind flowing kind of effect, we're going to bring in something called wind. And you're going to want to, I like to just kind of have both of them aligned at the start. And you select both, and I like drag it to the right. And then you can rotate it to your pleasing. And just pay close attention to the arrows in the wind, right? So i bring it a little bit more. You'll need to do a lot of fine tuning in terms of like wind strength, but let's, let's talk about that. So we have our wind now, right? And you'll see it's kind of like doing whatever. It's kind of weak. Let's pump it up to 20 and see what happens. So when you pump it up to 20, the particles are flying. They're just like zoom, zoom, zoom. And I think I'm going to go ahead and, and leave it at this for now. Or maybe I'll bring it down to like 15 or something. I don't want it to be too aggressive. But you want it to get across the composition here. Okay, we're bringing it back to 20. So now that we have that, you're probably wondering, okay, what about these glowing embers that I've set up? Make sure you're in your particle system. They're really simple to create. You create a plane, drag it up high, out of sight. You don't want anyone to see this. Press tab to enter edit mode, right click, subdivide. I like to do this. And then just click and drag. I have proportional editing on right now. You don't need that. I like to make it look like a, think like a chip or something like that, like a Dorito or something, or a shuriken. You don't want it to be perfect, like a perfect plane. This is good. I'll shade it. It doesn't really matter because you're not really going to see it. I'm going to call this particle. Now, <clears throat> let's make this a bit smaller so you guys can see a bit more. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on our plane that we use for the particle system. And we're going to have to do this three times because we have three different particle systems here. Scroll down. Render might be hidden for you in terms of uh, it's not collapse. It's collapsed. I mean, uncollapse it. Render as object instance object, and you're gonna go ahead and type in particle. You're just pretty much just referencing this top particle. What I like to do when you start bringing in objects is bring in a bit of rotation, and then let's just go ahead. So we have rotation object and our particle we're gonna do that two more times rotation object particle make sure you get this right last time when i was setting this up i clicked something else and i was like what's going on rotation object particle okay let's test it out you'll see we got something you got them. They're moving. These objects are flying through. If you want, if it's looking too big, before we start, whoa, got too much stuff going on here. Let's see if we can get it in a frame where we can see these. Now, some, most of the time I'm bringing down the scale and I'm holding down shift just to really drag it here. And I'll just bring it down to something that quite frankly looks like a particle. Scale, do it again. Just want to make sure everything is consistent because any inconsistency, you will notice it. Now, let's enter rendered mode. I think I actually already have these things with the material. No, I don't. Hmm, interesting. Anyways, if you click material, and we're just going to call this globe. I'm just going to go ahead and hide this. Could be some sort of Eevee thing going on. Emission. 
crank it up to like 20 or something, right? And you'll see these are our objects kind of like flying. You can change the color to something a bit more embery. And what I also do is in motion blur, I already kind of messed with the shutter. You can 0 0.06 was a kind of nice one for me. Then let's jump into compositing. I already pretty much did this. I'm just going to save you guys some time here. I'll have the project files linked. Maybe I'll set up like a WeTransfer or something like that. But all I did was in the compositing is you want to make sure you turn on use nodes to see everything. I brought in a glare. And you can bring these in by pressing Shift A and then just searching. Lens distortion, which add that nice like dispersion. Then I overlaid some grain texture, which pretty much you go down to this checkerboard kind of thing, and then you create a new one and you click noise. And then I kind of had it like 50 50. And then if you click render, boom, there it is. You have your particle system, and it's all looping and pretty much set up for you to play around with. So, yeah, go in there and just play around with some of the some of the random stuff like the brownian the drag all that random shit um i think you could find it pretty useful or it could create you can create some sort of rain effect or whatever but it'll take your visuals up to a little bit of a next level and people are gonna be like wow that's fucking intense like let's go so like always Thank you so much for being here. I've been seeing that some of my YouTube videos have started to get more and more, just more eyes. And it's interesting because it's when I started learning Blender like four years ago and some of those practices are just like terrible. So I may start going through these and just like redoing some of the things I've uh, learned way back when. And I know Blender's updated quite a bit. But anyways, thank you for being here and I appreciate you. Uh, hopefully I'll see you again.